Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Space Engineers. Uh, yeah, it's been a little while, I'm sorry for things petering off like that. Uh, needless to say, uh, the things I explained in the last video I uploaded, uh, the game was basically starting to feel more like work than actual play, and uh, I was kind of taking the fun out of it. I gotta get back into spectator here. Or first person, yes, I've been messing around with the controls. Uh, so I am in a creative aspect. Uh, the only issue with the creative, and I'm gonna have to look into it, is yes, all power generating blocks are infinite power, which kind of makes things, you know, kind of cheaty. I want the creative building, but I don't want, you know, the creative power and stuff like that. So I might look and see if there's a way to actually edit the save file. If anybody knows a way to do that, please let me know. But anyways, uh, there's a project I wanted to, I've been wanting to work on for a while. I've talked about this a few times, and it was actually supposed to be the next big build I was going to work on. I never went around to working on it. And it's basically, it's supposed to, it's going to be a ship that when you land onto any surface, and that's why we're actually here on, uh, sorry, Britska Cromwell and Plummet. And no, I have forgot, not forgotten the name. And I do have a, a one of the projects I wanted to do, which it's going to make me being in creative is going to make, make it so much easier. Uh, speaking of other projects too, there's uh, another one. Uh, let me ch do something here. That's better. I forgot to turn my uh, draw distance up. But I do have plan. Well, I have a few plans for the asteroids, but I do have one plan that being in a creative world is definitely going to make it so much easier. Uh, I haven't decided exactly what I want to do with it, but it's definitely going to be quite something when it's done. But anyways, uh, oh yeah, i got to get my hotbar set up. Okay, that's a good start. Uh, it's also a good, uh, good time to show one of the new features they've added. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build this up. I think one block above the ground should be good enough. Uh, just for keeping some arms reach, for instance. Uh, one of the things they've done is they've actually incorporated different skins. Why does this look so funny? Oh, that's a light armor block. That's right. Uh, but yeah, they've added, uh, given us a clean armor skin for free. Uh, you can't actually see the difference of it right here. Let's place two of them next to each other. And if I go to the, go to here, I was actually going to make this white. Make one the clean armor. And I'll make the other one the old armor, or dirty armor, and I've complained about this <laughs> a few times, and I'm one, actually wondering if this is why they've done that, and I always hit uh, tab instead of tilde, yeah, you can sort of see it, the white, it's uh, sort of worn, where this, it's actually got like a nice gloss painted look to it, so it's interesting, you don't really know so much on the white, but if I go to a different color, you would, but anyways, uh, there you go. You can see the texture there. But that's what they've done. And uh, they also added a build planner too. And, sorry. Uh, build planner, apparently, somehow the blocks get teleported to your inventory, I guess. It's probably one of those things where you have to have a, an antenna on your base and it wirelessly transmits the supplies to your inventory. So if you want to do something stupid like me and build something 40, 000, that uses 40,000 light armor blocks, it'll send you a million plates somehow. I don't know the whole premise behind it, but that is that. So anyways, uh, yeah, so this is going to need a little bit of room. So I want to start by going here and go put that jetpack back up. Uh, I think that should be good. Now I want to flip this over. If I can, I won't let me do that here. Now that I think about it, I don't think I need to go that high. So now I gotta flip this thing. Let's uh, let's do this right here. What was it? Mm. No, that wasn't it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the whole aligning to the. Aha! There we go. Yes. Sometimes you learn things a little too late, and that just helps me rotate on the 90 degree axis. This is a little easier. All right, so let's go ahead and start building up some blocks. So this is going to be a fairly big vehicle. No, let's not. No, no, no. We're building a new ship. It's going to look like a new ship. There we go. That's better. So this is going to be fairly big. Uh, I'm trying to think, trying to decide whether I want three or four landing gear. 
just because of the size of it. It doesn't need to be, I need to have all four gear on the ground. Let me think about this for a sec. I think we will go with three just for the sake of it. I am using light armor block, so it's going to be a little on the lighter side. I don't know how much lighter, but it is going to be a little lighter. And let's go one more. So this is going to be a fairly big vehicle. Uh, yes, I'm calling it a vehicle. Should I go with that or should I go with a slope? No, we'll put the slopes like this. And I'll actually do those off camera. I'll just get a rough idea here. So, yeah, it's going to be coming across like this. Let me uh, back the armor blocks. That's not going there. And like that. So this is going to be the center. It's going to be in the back end here. It's going to be seven. What was it? Seventeen wide. So seventeen, and I think the front end it had to be because of solar panels and pistons and the doors opening. I need. Probably nine, so probably 14 by 17. Uh, why is. Did they really rebind that, or am I just being an idiot? And I'm actually off center here. Yeah. I also wanted to have a pressurized cabin here. You know what? Let me get. The, let me quit rambling. I'll get a rough frame set up. Okay, and there it is. So, yeah, the biggest issue I've been having with this build is trying to figure out how to more or less build it because I have to think think about this particular project in two different states one's going to be in the shape that I'm building it in and the shape it's going to be when it's fully deployed which is going to be the the base side of the so-called base ship and yes I'm using quotes on here uh, so one of the issue things I got to think about too is uh, I want to utilize merge blocks as much as possible so that all the all the grids and yes there's going to be a few grids on this are all locked together when it's not in use and uh, I also got to think about articulation so what I need to do too is also think about how things are going to be joined uh, when this thing is fully opened I wanted to have it basically a long platform going all the way across I might have to cut that tree down we'll find out but yeah let me uh, get some hinges in here because uh, we also gotta get some sort of articulation in. Uh, not only that, it has been mentioned to me many times never to use conveyor junctions because they cause lag. Uh, for the sake of this build, I do have to use them. I've never personally experienced lag in, with them. And the crawler was basically a whole bunch of junction blocks m m put together. Sorry about that. Uh, where are they here? I can't find them because I'm in creative. I don't have a progressive progression tree. Uh, easier to just go there. Convert. Uh, oh, it's a sorter. Junction. There we go. I want those solar panels. Whatever. I can get it back. But yeah, there's going to be basically everything's going to be connected onto a main line in the back here. And there's going to be pretty much everything. There's going to be a refinery. There's going to be. A, an assembler or two H2O2 generator. I'm going to try to get a uh, tank on the back here. But the reason why I need the, con the conveyor junction is going over or on, over onto this side, and it's probably just going to be on this side. I haven't thought about the other side yet, but there's going to be a, a docking port. Now, in order for the, or I call it docking port, but connector, you know what I mean. In order for that to actually work with the rotors, I actually like the advanced rotors. I have to be able to hook it up to the conveyor junction line. I know what I'm talking about. At least I think I do. I'm going to have to pull that back too. Uh, as far as mods go, the only mod I have installed is the Build Vision mod. Which, for some reason, I think it saves. Oh yeah, I did. Hitting the wrong button here. Is what I have to do is I have to lock it. Where is it? Rotor lock. And at the same time, to name them. Because there's going to be one on this side, there's going to be one on the other side, and they're going to be joined together. So, oh yeah, it's not going to be this. It's going to be... I don't know if I should be using the... If I was going to be using the conveyor pipes themselves. Because basically i got to make like an armature of sorts. So let's uh, rotate that right axis. And then on that one. And then we can go down here. 
No, actually, this is the wrong way. This is going to be facing up. Okay, sorry about that. I Sometimes you're... The button, key, the key you should be hitting isn't the key that always works. So that's going to be like that. And I'm thinking about it now. That maybe I'll just have... Maybe I will just have conveyor junctions. Because there's going to be a, a similar rotor setup on the top. Top section. So there's going to be only this one grid in between. So I might just go with the junctions. Just keep it all clean and uniform. And then I have to do the same thing on the other side, mirror it. i got to pair them up in the terminal when I build one. So let me get that done. I'll bring you back when I've I got something to show. Just have, just have to show this quickly. Uh, when you're actually doing the rotor displacement with the build vision, you can actually watch it go. It's really cool for uh, lining stuff up. But I want, I'm doing that because i got to put one on the other side. i got to connect them with merge blocks somehow. But, yeah, anyways. So, I've been having some issue trying to get these merge blocks on. Normally, I'd put one on here and put one on the other one and then join them together. But because of the fact that I'm building them in a complete state, I can't actually do it that way. So, I'm going to have to do things a little differently. I'm going to have to think outside the box on this one. So, I'm going to get rid of that, get rid of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a merge block there. I'm going to take a U out. I'm going to put an armor block here. Now, what I need to do, uh, let's get that out of my way, and let's see here. So I want to go, go positive, let's go about 20 degrees. Now, do I actually need to power these? That is the question. Uh, let's see here, uh, upper limit, let's make that 20. Okay, velocity. Okay, it does need power. All right, uh, let's, let's go grab a solar panel somewhere. Where are you? Power blocks. Oh, uh, <laughs> let's see if this actually works. I, I realized I have it locked. Okay, yeah, you do need to power. And caught it just in time. Uh, torque's a little low, but it's also slow, too. Uh, let's see if we can turn the velocity up. Okay, and then... Alright, we won't have to worry about locking it, so let's get another merge block on here. And that's not going to work. Oh, maybe it will. Uh, upper limit, let's move that to 26. Come on. Aha. And I put it the wrong way. Aha. Alright, let's see if I can get it to glitch out again. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Alright, now we just go to... Let me reverse that. And voila, we have a connected grid. Just like that. That's how I do things. Now, I do have to make sure I n name those ones. So I know which ones those are, because I'm going to be using other ones that are going to be holding this build together. So let me get a control plan on here. I'm going to pair these two up, make sure they're set up to go the right direction, or at least named and then I will continue on so in the meantime what I'm going to do if I still have them on the bar yes I do so it's going to go up three and then it's going to be the same thing on the other side where it's going to be one two three and there's going to be another rotor here which is going to be one of these and go ahead and go ahead and lock that Again, it'd be nice if you could set it so all rotors are automatically locked when you place them just to make building a little bit easier. And then from here, it's going to be the roof. Now, I'm really hoping that these 
the rotors do have enough power to do this. And how is this one going to go? I'm trying to think here. Yeah, it should be just like that. And there is going to be a bit of a gap here. But what I want to try to do... Hold on. I got this in the wrong spot, don't I? I don't think so. Now, basically what I'm trying to do is I want to utilize slopes here and here. So when this closes, that the slopes themselves these ones here that edge doesn't actually touch so when it comes down it creates a platform where there's going to be a merge block somewhere in the middle that will actually join it together in a locked position I want to have it a locked position when it's up like this and a locked position when it's uh, down and folded up so anyways let me finish this up and try to figure out how I was going to do this again I'll bring you back alright so here's sort of my setup I do realize it's not closing properly I might have to replace this block here with a slope or something like that we'll see how it goes but so far it seems to be working somewhat okay I do have the first two set up to lock and unlock the rotors the other two are set to reverse them so let's go ahead and unlock them and then we'll go and reverse everything hmm I must have this one. Those one, one of those still locked, right? That one's locked. That one's locked. Uh, yeah, don't tap to get out of here. Uh, let's try reversing it. I was messing around with the top section. I wasn't actually opening the second section here. Hmm. Let's have it going the wrong way. So if it's at zero now, this one goes negative, which it should. As you can see from here, lower limit negative, upper limit zero. It should be at zero right now. Uh, that's actually what I like about that build vision. I, I can name them in here, and at least I'd be able to see them, even though I can't rename them there. So that's L1B. And currently at zero so why is it not going missing something here unless something is touching which I highly doubt oh could be this do I have another block on the other side I do well it's all connected anyway so I have a feeling it's getting stuck here okay, it's not that one uh, it's uh, <laughs> let's not take everything out yet. Actually, it could be this one too. That's what it could be. It could be getting stuck on the block. And let's try that. Joint one. Let's go ahead and reverse you. There we go. Yes, it was getting stuck on the block. So basically, there's going to be a section like this on either side. That's going to open up. There's going to be another feature I'm going to work on next that's going to be going on top. It's going to basically be some solar panels that go up. So let's go ahead and let's get off of this. Let's get that out. Now, the thing about building with a large grid is it's almost too easy to build too big. Uh, I, will pl I do plan on locking everything with merge blocks in the open and close position. In this position here, if I could figure out which <laughs> button I'm supposed to be using for my jetpack. Oh, dampeners help. Yes. Uh, in this position here, what I could probably do, probably put merge blocks here and here, lock those two together, and then on uh, this section here, probably do the same thing, have a merge block right about here and here, or one there, one there, one there, one there, sort of deal. Possibly. Let me see if I can work something out and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've been messing around with it a little bit and the merge blocks do not want to actually merge here for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because it's not sitting 100% flat. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's just barely not connecting to either that or 
maybe because it's going through a rotor and it's it is a connected grid it doesn't want to merge the connected grids I was even putting slopes here to make sure that it doesn't try to get confused with which blocks are which for which grid but it doesn't want to work so for the this part here we're gonna have to just rely on the whole rotor lock function now for this part here we're actually gonna be putting a connector here and this is just gonna be a place to dock a ship uh, yeah this is the vibration that's why I was trying to get everything to lock but doesn't want to play that way doesn't want to play the BC way uh, connector yes that is what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and put this on top. This is just a dock a ship. Uh, I am being well aware of where I'm going to be placing things because I do have to make sure that this thing packs up. Uh, as it is, we'll get down here, get this out of my hand so I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, this was supposed to be for the, the merge blocks, but they're not doing anything. So anyways, let's go ahead and unlock those and we'll just close her up. Now, on top of this, is going get, to get interesting, because on top of here, I'm going to have, I think I'm going to go with three pistons with a solar array that's supposed to unfold in time with this, so that when this is laying flat, that the pistons are going this way, according to the platform, so they'll be standing up. So that's going to be how it's going to be interesting. Uh, what I do want to try to do too is see if I can actually get these to lock here. If not here, then at least have the solar panels lock up top. I did have to make a few notches here just to avoid clipping issues. Sadly, that's just how it is, but I never said this was going to be a good looking ship. It's just going to be functional. At least I hope it will. So then that gives us one block space here. Now, I want to basically have everything inside here that we possibly need. Everything like a refiner, uh, there's going to be an H2, uh, hydrogen tank on the back and the whole nine yards. But right now, I need to work on the solar situation. So this is going to be the midpoint here. Originally, I was thinking about having a, a row of blocks here with a merge block to get it to all lock together. But that's clearly not going to be the case. So I'll probably just end up having probably just a, sort of like a rib going across here. Sort of like a, we'll call it a spine, for instance. But anyways, so here we're going to have to have, let me think about this. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So the, I actually made this 11 long. I was only planning on making it 9, but it's actually 11. So we're going to have the solars in the midpoint here. So I've been thinking about it, and I think the best way to do this is to go up and put the rotor here. Now, this one could be just a standard rotor, but I'll just use advanced because it's there. And then from here, uh, we're going to place, yes, we're going to place a block. And then we're going to throw some pistons on. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to get these in here. I can. So one. Oh, maybe not. It didn't actually place the the, block, the rotor head. All right, so this is where build vision comes in handy again. So we are going reverse on this. Let's bring this up. Uh, let's actually lock that because I forgot to do that. Uh, lower limit is no zero is going to be the upper limit because we're going negative and. Again, this will have to do, be some fine-tuning. This is just for now. Just so I can get things into place. Okay, thank you. Let's get that out of the way and place the pistons. So one, two, three is what I was thinking. And then here... Yeah, okay, I was going to have to do that. Uh, because I do want this section to actually merge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place a merge block here. And let's see if we can take this out without ruining anything else. Put a merge block there. So what happens... Ooh, is that even going to connect? Hmm. This could be interesting. Uh, let us find out. I didn't... Ru and as far as I know, there's actual no displacement on these, is there? Uh, let's actually open up the terminal on this since it's actually here. And no displacement. Hmm. So then maybe I might have to do this differently then. But even then, being a connected grid, I probably won't even join anyways. 
because I might have the same issue as happened with uh, this section here. Because what I was thinking about doing, instead of going three pistons, I could go with two pistons and have them extended, the, retracted to the point where it just lines up with the merge block. Because apparently I'm like a foot off and it's not going to connect. But let's actually reverse this, reverse this and see what happens. Off, thank you. And then we go down to reverse and see what happens. It does connect. Good. That's what I was hoping for. Now the problem is, though, is I have no idea what... Actually, I, I do know which ones those are. If I go in here, because it's going to be the ones that aren't actually labeled. So we'll turn you off, and... Let's get out of here, and let's see if that actually worked. It did. Okay, are you actually going to move now? You did not. Hmm. Do I have to turn the other one off? Interesting. Okay, this might bring out the clang. The pistons actually merged, did they? Uh, that part did. Alright, maybe I'll have to do that then. I might have to set the extension limit. Because I want these... You know what? Let's try it without locking this thing. I know that's uh, calling for disaster, but I have yet to see this so-called demon that destroys games. Oh yeah, I was going to more pistons on here but basically what's going to happen is there's going to be three pistons on here it's going to be a block like so and then i'm going to put a couple more rotors on here and i'm sure a couple of people out there are biting their nails right now it's like oh my god he's going to break the game he's going to break the game uh, uh let's put both of them on just because so i can get this out of my hand we'll lock these Lock and lock. All right. Uh, since I have everything labeled, I don't have to worry about which ones these actually are. So I can go ahead and start building. And now for the re reason why I have this extended so far is because I don't want. I basically want as much solar coverage as possible. And so what I'm going to do because I know I have to make sure that the mouth isn't working today uh, the rotors need space I am going to be using batteries as sort of like a filler in here so in that way we do have batteries support you know what I should turn the torque up on that and then I'll lock it ow uh, yeah, let's go uh, torque getting a little heavy there Uh, something's not right here. Hang on. All right, so here's what I've come up with. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a wobble to it, and I think it might be because of the pistons. I will be using the shared inertia tensor on these. Uh, let's actually set that up right now. Oh, we got some green in here. Nice. All right, pistons. Piston one, two, and two. And we are going to share inertia tensor of those. Did not like that. Seems to be more stable with it. Alright, anyways, that is that. Let's get out of here. And I'm a little worried about this rotor here. I don't know if this is actually going to be able to support the weight or not. So I'm going to actually go down here where I can see it a little bit better. Let's uh, try to get to a terminal where I can actually see. There we go. So that's this one here. This is the rotor for it. So I have, let's turn the torque all the way up, braking torque's all the way up, let's unlock it, and it drops. Hmm. That's too much weight. Uh, let's try reversing it. 
versus it does nothing. All right, I'm going to take some batteries off and see if that fixes the problem. All right, so I was able to get it working. I had to go back to an, old, an earlier save, or the, the save where it was actually working on me. Uh, I don't know what it was that was causing it, but it seems to be working now. And I'll go ahead and reverse to show you. It's basically at the, its weight capacity. Uh, I actually had to take... I think I took a solar panel off at the end. I'm probably going to take two more off. But basically what i got to do... Excuse me a second. Sorry about that. Ran a little short on breath there. Don't smoke, kids. Trust me. Anyway, uh, I was probably going to take... Um, yeah, because I got six on here, so I got sixteen altogether. Six and two is eight, eight and eight. And like I said, it's at basically at the lifting limit of this rotor. Now, originally I was thinking about putting a second rotor in, but yeah, uh, the fact that I have to use the merge blocks and I can't actually put them in an unbuilt state because I'm in creative. I'm not complaining about that. I'm just saying. Let's go ahead and lock that before anything goes wrong here. Oh, here comes the clang. Fly, little birdie, fly. Oh, there's my first clang. Uh, believe me, I've seen a lot worse. Anyway, let's try that again, shall we? I had to boast about that on Discord there. First time meeting clang. All right, so uh, what I want to do first... First, make sure this is actually working. Okay. Now, I want to see if uh, linking, uh, if sharing these pistons is A, going to stop that from happening, and B, if it's actually going to even move. Because I, I think that's what was causing the rotor from not being able to lift those up. And that definitely seems like it. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can bring it again. Uh, if this is the case, it looks like this project may not work as intended. Uh, I'll still upload the video. Why not? Just be <laughs> just because. All right. Yeah, it's a shared inertia. Now, what's going to happen when I get up here? I got everything else locked. Fortunately, you can't lock the pistons. Yeah, here it comes. Toggle it on and off doesn't work. Actually, it didn't actually toggle it on and off. Oh. So it's a rotor lock. But as you can see, we're at the, the tipping point here. I got to admit, though. You know, from what I've heard, it's awfully tame compared to my experiences. So then that just means they'll have to stay in a fully unlocked position. Just fine. All right, and then so basically what's going to happen is uh, uh, the platform's going to unfold like it did. But this piston is going to go from the zero degrees here to a negative 270. So it's going to be pointing down, but it's going to be in a... T in such a timing that it'll it's it's not gonna hit the other side because that's what I gotta worry about. So let me set up a couple of timer blocks here and see if I can get get a sort of a routine set up. And then once it unfolds and the pistons will extend all the way and the solar panels are just gonna rotate ninety degrees to go horizontal. I have thought about using Izzy's solar panel alignment script on this, but because of the fact of the situation of the rotors, it's not going to really work because it works on a T-section like this, but it has to have another rotor here. Uh, then I also started thinking about packing it up. I want this thing set up so you could hit a button, goes through a sequence, unfolds, whatever, extends the solar panels, and you push another button, and it folds itself back up into a, a ship and you can fly off with it. So let me see if I can get something set up and I'll bring you back. Okay. I seem to be pretty happy, quite happy with the timing. Uh, if you're wondering why I didn't use a uh, connector ports instead of the where the merge blocks are going to be, 
uh, one, I won't be able to actually use them as actual blocks. You know what I mean? Like I can't actually place stuff on the side like the merge blocks. How I'm actually got them sort of hidden in here. And then the other one would be uh, two. I don't know about the actual height on them. I haven't checked that. They actually look a little taller than normal blocks. And uh, when they, you know, when you dock to a ship, you always get that sort of magnetism. And I don't know what's going to happen if we're getting simple things like that happening. But anyways, this is it deploying. And I'm actually really happy watching this happen. How it's going to look, how it's going to react and happen on the other side is going to be a whole other story. But what I want to do is I want to check to see, I want to add a few more blocks on this platform, just sort of expand it out. Uh, I probably could adjust the timing a little bit more just to have it so it all stops at once. But the, the pistons stop first, which is, isn't that big of a deal. And then once it gets down to there, the timer is going to probably at the end of that cycle, however long it's going to take, it's going to extend the pistons up and it's going to rotate the, the panels horizontally. So, so far it's looking pretty good. Uh, just for symmetry pur purposes, I am going to add a few more blocks. And I just got to put four on this side. One, two, three, and clang. No. No, that is not the case. So, that is that. So... Now what I gotta do is I gotta repeat that on the other side. Let's actually make sure it's gonna close with the extra extra weight. It seems like it seems almost like there's a a tipping scale. And yes, I had to do a few trial and errors on this. Needless to say, the first time I opened this up, that tree was actually stuck in the solar panels and going for a ride. <laughs> it's closing up the closing the thing up. But I am happy with it. I really am. It's slow, but I'm, I imagine the weight on this is quite substantial right now. Uh, that's another question is if or I should be able to lift it off the ground. I uh, have thought about what I'm going to do for the, the thrusters. I might have to turn the torque down on those a little bit, but I do still plan on putting some blocks here. So at least it's got something to push up against. So anyways, uh, let me finish this up on the other side and we'll continue on. Okay, I finally got it all set up. Uh, it's more or less there. I don't know what I was ha why I was having trouble with this side here, but it is working. It does have the, the full seven solar panels on there. So we go ahead and we push this button. And this why I was up in the air. And it'll open up. And I've got the, the pistons extending too. What I've had to do is I've had to set both of them onto a 16 second delay. And I'm using two other timer blocks to engage these timer blocks. So now you can see the pistons are extending and the solar panels are rotating horizontally. And there we go. The timing could be adjusted a little bit. And again you see that bounce. That's why I was trying to use the link merge blocks to sort of lock things together. but. It is somewhat stable. Whether or not it survives a, a flight, I have no idea. Let me hit that button. And then it starts the process in reverse. The pistons come down, the solar panels fold back up. And then shortly here, in a second or two, the sides will start lifting up. I'll put another connector over there just in case for a rover, but it's not lining up too well, so... It's gonna be modular, so if you wanna, if anybody wants to download uh, download this and uh, set up a specific connector for their rover, then you can more than welcome do that, or another one for the ship there. And this is just basically for space purposes. So once we get in here, if it, after everything closes up, I put this here too, just to sort of stop them from caving in as much. Uh, I could probably fill this in a little bit. I do have to leave. An opening for this but I can always put some slopes in here if I can get the right angle one there and there and another one there and over here and that's just to fill in the spot a little bit so then that's basically basically it all it's really left to do is just get it all furnished and we do have to get it flight worthy so that's gonna probably be the next step is getting some some engines in here, so let's open her back up. Now it's gonna take a minute, or let's, let's actually watch it from down here, just because we can. Run over to this side, 
Oop. Now, I already know. I'm not going to be wise to do this during flight. Especially in the atmospheric flight. I'm going to try to have most of the thrusters underneath or embedded in the floor. I know with the atmospheric thrusters, there's going to be the intake sticking out. And here we go. That's kind of cool. It's cheap. It's ugly. But it works. Okay, so... Uh, those are... Sorry, itchy nose. Uh, those are fully extended out. I've got to figure out where I want to put these... The thrusters. Because I want to... I'm going to assume... Well, yes, assuming always makes an ass out of you and me. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, that eight atmospheric thrusters should get this off the ground. So I want to sort of have them embedded in the floor. So what we'll do... I also have to get some more gear in the back too. I have to keep that in mind. Alright, so let's go get some thrusters on. We'll need ions and we'll need atmos. Alright, so we'll start with the atmos, of course. Which are facing the wrong way. Now, how would I want to do this? Probably... Oh, you did not like that, did you? Oh, well, too bad. Yeah, okay, so two there, and then we'll put two more over here. I have to make sure I have enough room for a refinery and assembler and all that stuff in here. So I want to sort of keep it in line with that. So... I guess we'll take that out. And, like, so. Do the same on the other side. Uh, okay, where is this one going? This one's going to go right in here, is it? Yeah, right in there. Uh, clang, you make all the noise you want. You don't scare me. You had your chance. All right, do that. Put another block in here. Full block, get rid of that. And then we'll throw some ions in here. And I wasn't actually thinking about this, but this actually works having a the ions on the inside because in that way they're less intrusive just because you don't have the intakes probably don't need eight of them but may as well why not it's not like I have to fly eight, uh, four, eight minutes to go get more supplies yes I'm going to abuse the fact that I'm in creative alright so that is like that so that down here we're going to have to have our forwards and backwards and all that stuff. I also got to make sure I have the refinery and all that stuff in. Let's actually get the rest of these in first. Like all the other essentials we need in here. Uh, we're going to need the assembler, which doesn't take up much room. Not the basic refinery. No, no, no. We're going to go for... The big guy. Get the big guy in here. Uh, H2O2 generator, hmm. I'm almost thinking about that, but I'm also thinking about just using the oxygen tank with an air filter, or two air filters, and just pressurizing the cabin that way, but I think we'll put one on just in case. Uh, put it over here, we're done with solar panels for now. Alright, so let's start with the assembler, or the refinery, the big guy. Now, I do want to have... Everything connected. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about speed upgrades, so we could probably put this one in here. I do have to make sure that there's going to be a room for that that connector, right? And I got I got four block space, so that's fine. Plus, I got some headroom too. Uh, I do plan on having having everything in the floor and possibly connected if possible. Uh, an assembler. Oh, jeez, I did not put that on my bar. I thought I did. Assembler can go here. You really want attention, don't you? Now, the problem with this... is if I have it connected just like that, you have to look at the floor to access it. But then you can access the assembler from any terminal, really. I don't think that's that big of an issue. 
Hmm. Just trying to think of how I do this now. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, we might actually have room to put a put a hydrogen tank in here. It is three high, which worries me when this thing folds up. And I do have to watch out for that connector, so we could put a hydrogen tank right here, and that'll sort of counterbalance the refinery. Well, I know we're running a little late in this long in this video, so let me see what I can come up with. Well, believe it or not, I'm actually done. I think I spent look at the recording time, like when I started recording, I think it was about four and a half to five hours of work I've done on this, and this is in creative too, so that's uh, that. So anyways, uh, a bit of a tour here. Here's a cockpit. I haven't done much to, to it. I did get a cryopod there. I got a uh, H2O2 generator there. Uh, it is pressurized. I have an air vent up there. I got the door closed, and we'll just go make sure that it is a pressurized environment. Room pressure 100%, which is good. If you open the door, then it just says unpressurized. I'll just double check that. Not pressurized. Good. And I had to actually check that because I was using, uh, oops, not this one. I was using conveyor junctions just to hook up the H2O2 generator and the cryopod. And that's only in there just to fill up bottles and stuff like that. Cryopod is there to sleep. And then we come out here, we've got the two big jump drives uh, waiting for us. So I try to get some lights in here. Uh, i got a oxygen tank here that is going to be supplied by the H this H2O2 generator, which of course goes and pressurizes the room, supplies the cryopod and whatnot. And then we got a hydrogen tank here, we got the H2O2 generator over here. I put a medical bay in the back here. Again, this is hooked up in the conveyor line. And then we got uh, assembler here, we got two storages for now. Uh, again, it's always expandable, you can always add more storage if you want. Uh, I was going to put a large storage in here, but I didn't think it was really going to be A, necessary, and B, uh, trying to fit it in here, especially with this thing in the way. And I want to, I'd like to have this here because everybody, you know, you don't want to be flying this big thing going around looking for supplies when you can just build yourself a small ship. Uh, speaking of small ship, we'll run out back here quickly and then we'll go back inside. I added a, a little tow cable here so if you do build a small ship, you can put it on here and then take it up to the atmosphere with this. Uh, thrusters, yes, we have engines. We have lots of engines. Uh, basically, I have four going in all, all directions except for the, the vertical lift, I have eight. So I have eight atmos going down, eight ions going down. The ions, I know it doesn't really matter because it's up in space, uh, since I've only got four on the top anyways, four of them going down that we don't really need the eight, but they're there anyways. But yeah, so eight atmos going down, four going sideways, four going frontwards, four going the other sideways, four going backwards. And then I got four gyroscopes, as you can see in the corners here. I got a couple of landing gear. Uh, I was originally planning on putting the landing gear down a little bit more, just so we had more clearance in case of rocks or uneven terrain or whatnot. So what I'll do is, uh, if this thing actually flies, we'll be able to lift it up and put a block down and just, you know, extend the legs down. Uh, as far as the, refi the, sem the refinery goes, there is actually room for two upgrade slots here. So if you want to do an upgrade to the, re the refinery, you can. Same with the assembler as soon as I can get inside here. Would have made more sense to open the doors, huh? Oh, I can't fit in. Okay. Uh, yeah, the assembler again, you got spot for an upgrade here. You could, could put one here and then just access the terminal. Or you can move the storage, put one on that side, and you got the spot on the back and all that fun stuff. Uh, what else did I put in here? A whole bunch more batteries in the back. So we have a total of 16 batteries on here. There's 14 in the back here and then we have the ones that are on the solar panels there. And I think that is just about it. Yes, other than that, there's lights all over the place. Uh, can button panel here to control everything. Go inside here and I do this because I'm getting, I try to get into a habit of it. And then when you go here, hot gaze uh, one is atmo toggling the atmospheric thrusters, two is toggling the ion thrusters, and then three, let's go into third person here, so you can get a nice view of the ship now, the base ship, it's, like I said, it's not the, the best thing looking thing in the world, but it looks so nice when it expands, so yeah, three unfolds it, four folds it up, 
I've named those two timer blocks. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually name this one too, because this is going to be sides. And then timer block two is going to be solar extensions. Hooray, no typos today. And that still leaves two, uh, two more timer blocks to be used for whatever purpose. And there we have it. There is our base. Our base is fully opened up. Lots of lots of room to fly around in too, so we can get a ship over there or another ship on the other side. And now the only thing that's really left to do, other than make a blueprint of it for the Steam Workshop, of course, is to pack it up and take it for a test flight. Now, I would like this to move a little bit faster, but I do realize, A, we're dealing with a lot of weight here, and B, we're also dealing with uh, a notorious game crasher, which is me and uh, uh, my sidekick, Clang. But so far, I haven't seen any issues except for that one time, and that was actually shocking. But this is good. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention, too, uh, you can see it on the left there, I put a small small uranium reactor on there just in case you want to charge up the jump drives quickly enough and you're out of battery power but there we go we are with a bang we are done yes and I've built up the wall in the back there so it sits a little more flush when it closes so now all that's left to do is make a save and see if we can actually get off the ground okay here we go Not enough. All right, so I need a few more thrusters then. Okay, let's try that. We put four more on there. As you can see, I put two of them on the back here, and then I tried to get two more underneath, but I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's find out. Yeah, no. Just too heavy. Sorry, let me do a thing. All right, let me get this thing off the ground.
Okay, it's off the ground, but for some reason, it wants to go nose down a little bit. Oh, it definitely needs more thrust. Oh yeah. It's definitely slow. I'm wondering if that's why it's dropping too. It'll go up, no problem. But for some reason, I've added two more gyroscopes on here too, so it just wants to keep going those down. I'm wondering if it's got, got to do with the construct connected grids because I have more than enough thrusters on here. Let's see if we've got a couple little fangs in the front. Hmm. Well, let me land this thing. Try to land it at least. Without breaking it. And then I'm going to try to get some more thrust on this. See if I got more room for it. So I'll be right back. Alright, well, it still wants to dip down. I put some more gyroscopes on, so it might be one of those things we have to manually readjust or try to do an override on the gyroscopes. But as you can see, we are flying. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this over here somewhere. Nowhere in particular. We're going to try to land it, open her up, and then we'll see if we can get it to space. Surprisingly, it's actually flying. Doesn't mean much, though. And here I am, heading towards the ground, and I forgot to save. Oh, look, it's that infamous biome border solid line that goes through. It's quite the shadow it leaves. Okay. Here we are, another biome. And let's unpack her. My original idea for this was uh, the landing gear were supposed to be on pistons that would extend to give you more ground clearance. So then when you go to land, that you you'd extend the pistons by uh, you know a couple of blocks, whatever. Oh yeah, I blocked myself in by a couple of blocks, and what was I saying? I just had a total brain fart. Something about a couple blocks, I can't remember. Anyways, let's get this on the ground here. Uh, what I probably should do. I'll actually go into the control panel here. We'll find all the landing legs and we'll group those onto their own group. So I can spell it right. And this is just so I can actually turn the auto lock on and off. So that when we get here, turn the auto lock off. And the reason for that is just to be able to settle down better. I'm wondering if that's Clang doing that. Groups, uh, landing gear. Uh, auto lock on off. Okay. Yeah, that is weird why it's doing that. But anyways, get it nice down on the ground, turn auto lock on, and let's go ahead and unfold it. Just give it a typical dry run here. Now let's look at the timer blocks in the back. It's like, wait a minute, why do I only have four blocks there? Oh my god, I'm missing some. And I just I realized I actually have them covered up with atmospheric thrusters. Still, why this thing wants to tilt forward like that, I understand I have the two jump drives in the front, but I also have the hydrogen tank and the refinery in the back. And those should actually outweigh the jump drives, you'd think, but I got added more thrusters up front and a couple more gyroscopes, but still having issues. Alright, so unpack's okay, and we'll go ahead and fold her up. And then we'll see if we can get her up into space.
I gotta admit, I'm actually quite happy with it. It does fly. Uh, it's looking uglier and uglier the more thrusters I add on to it. But yeah, uh, it's gonna do its thing, and then when, uh, when it's done, I'm gonna head up to space, and if I make it or not, I'll bring you back. Well, here we are. After a couple of reloads and a couple of more refits, we have finally made it. And, uh, yeah, needless to say, I have a lot of engines on this thing. <laughs> I mean, a lot. Uh, yeah. It was, yeah. Atmospheric thrusters weren't bad. They were doing pretty good. It was when uh, the ions had to take over. Yeah, it just wasn't enough. First I got up to 7 kilometers, and I got up to 10. And even at 10, it was slowing down to like 20 meters a second. It was wasn't going to get me up here, but here I am. We are almost out of the gravity well. So I'm going to go up a little bit further till we get out. I still don't know why it's dipping down like that. And I'm wondering if it's got to do with the connected grids and maybe if I should uh, put some gyroscopes on those top ceiling sections or whatever we're going to call them, the, the extendable platforms. But we will be there in a moment, and I will bring you back when we're out of gravity's cruel hold on this obscenely heavy beast. And here we are. Still don't know why it's doing this. I almost want to try to throw some gyroscopes on here. Just for the sake of it. I almost want to put it like... Put one there, and... Uh, where did I put that? In this corner. And it's still not doing it. That's weird. wonder if I should try to lock in rotors. It's kind of weird that it's actually doing this in 0G. Let me see if I can figure this out. Okay, so I'm unable to figure out why it is doing this or what I can do to stop it. Uh, the extra gyroscopes did not help at all. It could have to do with uh, things being powered and not being able to move. It could have to do with the multiple grids I have connected on here. It's hard to say. But since we're out in space anyways, let's uh, see if it unfolds. See if we have any clang incidences. So far, so good. If I had known it was, this, it was going to be spinning like this, I would have put a gravity generator on here so at least I could stand, around, stand on the base. Because unfortunately, my boots come disconnected. And I'm doing this just in curiosity to see if it's going to stop it from moving if the grids are all going the same way. And now it's rotating the other way. So it definitely has something to do with the rotors. But it works. Well, only one clang incident, and it didn't actually break anything. It just tried to fly away while it was still <laughs> anchored to the ground. But anyways, I think this is going to be a good place to call it. I've been working on this project for a while, and it's not surprising I was putting it off, because, eh, as you can see, I've been having issues with it. See, now it's rotating sideways. Why? I have no idea. I probably need a whole bunch more, uh, uh, whatchamacallits, gyroscopes. Oh, let's get inside quick. Because I want to see if, uh, find out what the w whole weight on this thing is. See if it tells me anything. Only a million pounds. It's not too bad. Let's actually see what the jump drive says. One of the jump drives. I'm actually curious to how heavy those things are. Uh, jump drive. It's not telling me what I wait. Uh, oh yeah, I gotta actually activate it. It's telling me I can go 4,000 because I got the two of them. Uh, oh yeah, we actually have to activate it through the hotbar and yes I did make a save just to be on a safe t 
safe side. Alright, let's go here and just see what happens. That was on number six. Yeah, it's a saying only a million kilos. I still don't know why it's rotating like this. Uh, if anybody out there has any ideas, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'm going to be posting this on the workshop too. I'm going to be leaving a very good note about this whole rotational thing. And I think, like I said, I think it's just got to do with the fact that rotors are pushing against themselves. Realistically, I'm sure if I, I locked all the rotors and then powered them off, maybe this wouldn't happen. It's hard to say. But anyways, like I said, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like as always. And I will see you in the next one. Later.